was pretty rough stuff for the Guangzhou Charge just now. Matt's uh, not exactly yeah. the closest match, but you know one team who's actually had a very rough schedule in terms of uh, the, the stage in, in general is one of Who, the teams that will be seen tonight. It is the Shanghai Dragons. They're going to be taken to the stage in just a moment yeah. against the Chengdu Hunters. So I really feel like, you know, we haven't seen much of the, the stage two Dragons yet. I haven't been able to see their full potential. Gladiators in New York are the two games they had sort of back to back. However, after those two, Look, the road uh, might be getting a little bit better for them, maybe with the exception of the final game of the season, but this game is important for Shanghai, Matt, if they want those playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you have three tough games to start off your stage. So you play the Mayhem, who uh, won in nine. The Outlaws, who we haven't seen play uh, yep. thus far this stage, uh, so you don't really know how to gauge them in stage I think Brent two. said that they wouldn't win a, a game this stage again on the uh, hot takes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm not letting them live that kind of stuff down. The Chonu Hunters, though, um, looking at their schedule, actually looks pretty good for them. I mean, this, uh, you know, we did that segment where the player said the definition of winnable. Like, these games are all winnable for the Hunters. Uh, we saw the Spark win today. Uh, the Spitfire looked pretty strong in Stage 2, but I wouldn't, like, say those are impossible games to win. They win this one. They beat the Gladiators. Uh, they have the potential to run the table. 7-0 yeah, stage today. for yeah. Chongdu, which would be pretty incredible. I, look, we did see some stuff from them in, in their previous match against Washington as well. A uh, couple stuff they kind of threw out the window a little bit. There were a couple rounds that looked incredibly questionable. They played, a, again, a very diverse roster of heroes across that series, though. It was great to watch. Obviously, Amon, we gave him player to match. He definitely deserved it. He was a guy that couldn't be taken down. But Chongdu have uh, consistently given us some very different looks. And they haven't just been cheesy. They haven't just been gimmicky. They've been working. This one especially surprised me. Oh, I mean, this was sick. When they came out with the Symmetra here on the Temple of Anubis, Elsa playing all these different heroes. But I think we did see like a few times where they would try uh, some different stuff that just would not work. Right. So I, I do wonder how how do you see this team adjust and just get rid of some of those compositions and really settle on some stuff. Yeah, I don't think that they want to you know lose easy maps here no. and, you know with the with the wrong approach with like we did on Temple of Anubis in that uh, Washington game. But anyway, let's bring them onto the stage. I'm sure they're going to make some noise. Hopefully, you will too. It's the Chengdu Hunters. I mean, I'm going to ask for it. We're definitely going to get noise for this team one way or another. Oh, yeah. they come? Evil Tile considered like the best, the best main support in China. Very, very hyped up over there, and we've seen him put some excellent performances on the table for this team so far. Yeah, I, I feel like we've seen strong performances from everybody. I think a lot of the talk goes around Amon with the Wrecking Ball play, but I you know Jin Lu's been a fantastic Farah, like you mentioned Evil Tile in the main support role. Uh, they, they have a very strong line. But Jimmy's Hanzo is also filthy. Oh, a couple yeah. of clips of that, which was pretty insane. So in terms of the roster we're seeing coming out here, probably no huge surprises uh, in the mix. Uh, obviously, Amon still in that main tank role, still holding it down, and uh, his team seems to be all the better for it. Again, we're looking for, you know, a couple of those crazy picks from Elsa, the Torbjorn, the Symmetra might be an option there. But their opponents are out. They've got a lot to prove, Matt. They're definitely trying to set themselves up for a shot at these Stage 2 playoffs. Let's welcome to the stage, the Shanghai Dragons. Good to hear uh, from Gregory a little bit earlier today over Watchpoint in the segment just talking about you know what she feels like her role is on her team and you know, even in the wider league itself. The Dragons just had honestly just two very nasty games to play at the start of this stage, but it's looking up from here for them. Yeah, I mean, you can't really gauge how the Dragons are so far here in stage two with their really tough first two games. So I think uh, this one against the Hunters, you've had the entire week the game plan for the Hunters this is their only match of the week so uh, how this is the first time we've seen anybody give an opportunity to just game plan strictly for Chengdu. So take note this is your roster for today. Gengri will be sitting for the beginning of it. Uh, Ding, a player we discussed actually a, a fair bit Matt, just me and you generally outside of games in the last couple of weeks. We saw some interesting uh, picks from him on some of those assault maps. I thought the attacking Junkrat was was, that, was an interesting touch. Uh, however, Interesting's a nice way to put it. Yeah, it didn't look great, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Riptire, he was looking to try and get value out of it against the Gladiators as well. Uh, that one didn't work. That one didn't work. Uh, maybe this one works. No, that one didn't work either. He might have got this one. He clearly wasn't watching uh, the Outlaws in uh, year one figuring how to make these work. <laughs> I think the league's changed. I think it's a little bit harder to pull the wool over yeah, your opponent's yeah, eyes yeah. in that regard. So, yeah, I mean, it was an interesting take. Uh, on, on how to use Junkrat. Most teams just prefer to go for it defensively. Now, we may not see that on the first map uh, of this particular series, but it might resurface again, you know, like map three, uh, around that way. Let's see what those maps are going to be, though, Matt. 
Here's your map set, presented to you by Toyota. And we got to look and see what's in this series. So it'll be uh, Li Zheng Tower kick things off, uh, followed by Paris. So we haven't had the We haven't cast that yet, have we? Cast that yet, but i uh, watched a lot of it. i played a lot of it. Uh, the King's Row and then Junkertown in things out. So uh, not really like, I mean, King's Row, I guess you could see like the Junkrat, like you were mentioning uh, on defense. I uh, don't really love Junkrat on offense. Uh, I, I think that's kind of- But Junkrat really usually stuff. benefits from your, your enemy being forced to play in chokes or a map where you have high ground by default as like a defender. Uh, Paris, interestingly enough, uh, which will be our assault map, doesn't have a lot of defensive high ground actually. It's quite it, it's quite even and it's quite yeah. hard sometimes for defenders to like exercise uh, an advantage because of that. But first things first, Matt, Li Shan Tower set in the control center. Kick it off. Ah, uh, yeah, you got uh, the Hunters playing the good old classic May Sombra composition. Uh, that old chestnut, uh, uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, composition that we all know and love. Now this is completely out of nowhere, but popularized uh, probably by Tvik or a team that he was on. Yeah. And then uh, you see uh, Ding on the other side. He's going to play the far here, kick things off. Uh, interesting. You play the far here against the Hunters. They, uh, out of all like the wacky heroes they play, they don't play a lot of hit scan. It's a, a May wall that comes out from Jinmu. Don't mind that. Isolate the Gums. Yeah, Jay Youngji takes a big hit there from a body grenade. So did Demon for not mistaken. Gums to open up with an aim on here. See Jinmu stunned briefly. He does have Ice Block available. He has to use it now. He pops out of it awfully quickly. The fight's pretty much done, especially with Ding being brought back into the fold. And we do have hit scan players on Chengdu, of course. We've actually seen Bacon Jack go for the McCree, the Widowmaker. Uh, I don't think he's really in a position to switch off this Zarya, though. So, yeah, I think, I think you need to keep on this for now. So. Also, just trying to get some poke down. You can hear the summer shots going off. There's you have the nano boost here for Kia. Who do you decide to give it to? It's going to be a nano boost that comes in from the dragon. It's, it's going to be Ding who is frozen. Hacked, then frozen. It all went wrong for him pretty much. Aimon there. Body grenade was thrown at him. That's the EMP now on the point. And Aimon is just trained on trying to get rid of Luffy, but the healing was there. Valkyrie, Coma. Making it pretty hard for him to finish off these targets. Jin is still alive at least. Almost freezing up Luffy. Forced to back away for a brief time. And Graviton Surge should end this fight. Jin pops out voluntarily of his ice block. And in fact gets a bubble from his Zarya there for a brief moment. He had a chance. Baker Jack is back now. Remember the point's still being held by Shanghai. Chengdu need a clean fight win here. Yeah, and it's going to be the Dragons who continue to hold on to the point. Mass some progress. And now you're going to see the changes come in for the Hunters. So it's a bit late, but... Yeah, I mean, I, well, I think they want to get used to some of the other ults, like EMP and Blizzard and whatnot, before you actually decided to make the change. The Shanghai Dragons, no changes required. Ding sort of making it so Chengdu spent too much time out in the open, being slow and sort of not being sure about engaging. They get punished by a lot of damage from the air, which puts pressure and stresses their healing resources, of which there aren't all that many. Burst heal, at least, the Dragons have an, a second form of burst heal in terms of the Bionic Grenade, which is then going to amplify subsequent healing for a brief time. It does help, but oh, it doesn't help keep Jay Bacon Jack alive. We'll give you the big tip, Aemon knockdown. Elsa also on the ground. 2v1 in terms of the trade so far, and Comus is going to bring that one back. That's huge. Evil Tal can't do a thing about it, and Ding's going to walk up knowing Elsa was going to get this suit or let's rip with the barrage. And on the point, Jinmu attempted to stall, but he got stunned up, finished off. Strong statement early from the Shanghai Dragons. They've heard talk, Matt. They've heard the Hunters walk around saying, we really represent China. You don't. Shanghai are more than happy to take round one away. Yeah, I mean, the Hunters get destroyed there. The first point. It's uh, how do you have an answer for Ding's Fara play? We'll have to see Bacon Jack bring out one of the hit scan heroes. Uh, Ding counts for 31% of the damage done by the Dragons in that first point. Yeah, well, how do they answer it? They definitely couldn't answer it without losing their Zyre old economy. And, and uh, you know, Control Center is usually a point we don't see Fara that often. Uh, it's because it's, it's very it's a low group. Yeah, yeah, it's a low have group. A, like, it's a smaller skybox, technically. Yeah. All right, so now we get a, uh, a Jinmu versus Ding battle of the Faras up in the sky. We got Widow Battle 2, Matt. Bacon Jack v DM. And no one's going to be bored about two mirror comps looking like this, Matt. <laughs> Damsu got hacked up there briefly, I think, where he was trying to play. Close to the pillar, breaking line of sight. Jinmu goes down to Ding here early. Now, does Evil Tile go for the Resurrect? Does he even have the space to do so? Ding drops in. He has his rocket boots. Oh, no, he doesn't! Oh! He had a chance to get up! Just hit shift, bro! 
Had he even done that, even if he got hacked after he used the boost, it would still have been fighting for nerves. A very classy way to deal with a Farah. Diem under extreme pressure. Keo finds it from distance. Koma immediately going for the Resurrect here. Shanghai are in control of the point, so use a Resurrect, stall it out a bit longer, and maintain presence. Yes, the Dragons are still preventing the Hunters from getting here close here. Eamon does have his minefield, so you see him put that on the point. Yeah, he's very low, though. Forced to use this shield and back out. And realistically, Matt, that minefield does very little. He moves up onto the point, uses the minefield, perhaps hoping that the rest of his team would do something to force Shanghai into it. But really, he rocks up, throws some mines down, and then just gets and then the just bounces. Yeah, I mean. And now the mines are expiring, so that ultimate going by the wayside to a degree. Although, look, I mean, Wrecking Ball's ultimate's not always decided to be intended to be a fight winner, no. right? So you do have EMP here, but you're just trying to catch like two or three players. So he connects with two there, I believe. So it's good enough to pick up those eliminations. Can you secure the point now? Two kills, two supports down. DM still needs to be dealt with. He doesn't have a lot of healing available, but he doesn't need it if he's not being damaged. Amon now has to try and chase him down. Knocked him over the edge there. Deals with the Widowmaker. The point though, still under control of Shanghai, man. Did and now with Gamsu's mines on there, it's a little bit more annoying for them to try and retake. Gamsu will stall this happily. I mean, did you need that nano boost there onto aiming? As it, he falls, so you don't even get anything out of it. You're not going to be able to even get the point. The Hunters are no richer for that particular fight with Baker Jack falling oh. the Yongjin. Yongjin, by the way, uh, putting a lot of pressure on backliners. I saw a backhand Keo just a couple of moments ago with the shield bash. It did a heck of a lot to control. It's interesting the Hunters decided to run the Sombra instead of running like a... Yeah, like as you see, you know, you didn't play the Brigitte, or like a D.Va, let's say. It's now Elsa makes the change. Bacon Jack will switch over to the Sombra as well. Luffy knows. We're in one fight territory here. Uh, he's expecting Amon to try and push the point from the right side. I think he might have caught a glimpse there. Yeah, surely. Sleep Dart should be at the ready, but he's focused more on just healing out the Yongjin. There it is. So that one lands, but a reactive shield still used for the Wrecking Ball. So Amon's still okay. He's able to roll out of there, but... Chongdu, because they don't have a Reinhardt or a Static Shield tank, they don't have the ability to just walk up and get presence on the point. So now they're split, and this is exactly what Ding wants. Going after one, after another. Barrage on the point, Jinmu was laying on the ground. There was nothing he could have done about it anyway. Evil Tal has also been removed. And we kind of thought this could be a bit of a trap game for the Chongdu Hunters. Shanghai looking absolutely solid on the Jung Tower. And you know, with a strong Barrow play, it forces the hunter to ch Hunters to change their comps. They can't have Elsa flex over to things like the Sombra. They need the hit scan. They need the D.Va to play. Which really, uh, it makes some of their compositions difficult to pull off. Gamsu always looking smug out there. The chef cooking up some goodies for the Dragons. Let's see map two in just a moment. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Welcome to Assist of the Week, presented by State Farm. 
A lot of times, trying to attack both point A and B on Hanamura can feel like beating your head against a brick wall if the opposing team is entrenched. So the Chengdu Hunters Elsa decided to use Symmetra's teleporter against the Paris Eternal on both points, allowing for an easy flank on both, leading to a full capture. Shadow and Missy Elsa is charged up and ready to rumble. He's doing so much damage right now. And with the teleporter, he's using it just to reposition himself. <laughs> oh my god, this guy! Ah, pretty filthy stuff from Elsa there. And uh, I mean, that was only recently, of course, in the last yeah. game from the Chengdu Hunters. So this game, I mean, I feel bad for the Hunters because they tweeted out like, oh, Mitch, um, Mitch and Matt cast our last game. Must be good luck charm. Yeah. I mean, it kind of has more to do with how you play, yeah. not us, Setup. <laughs> to put it on us. <laughs> Although we have casted, like, I think, the like, last three. Yeah, we got pretty lucky, I yeah. think, with a lot of those games. So far, though, looking a little bit shaky against Shanghai. Shanghai look like they've really pulled up their socks after that rough game against the Gladiators, of course, in New York prior. So they're looking like a team to beat. Yeah, and I think uh, what you saw is just not the ability to deal with the Farah play. Uh, Ding putting down like 30% of the damage to the whole map there for the Dragons. And uh, you never really saw the answer. The Widowmaker from Bacon Jack didn't really do much. You couldn't have Elsa play the Summer the whole time, which he did because he needed the Diva. You were getting a lot of just free picks with the Farah. We talk about uh, the fact that Chongzhu plays so many different heroes, Matt, and they play so many different styles, but their hero pools looked quite stressed in that last match. So Ding, uh, 10 final blows on, on that uh, map, which was the highest uh, of his entire team. So he was dominating. Also Yongjin, uh, I have to say, six final blows for him. He was definitely doing a lot of work. So Ding looking good. Yongjin, thumbs up. No C9s today. I mean, you can't C9 on, uh, well, you can actually, I guess, you on could. control. Yeah, no, Didn't I walk off the payload. Definitely possible. So, I, I, I'm just wondering, what adjustments do you have to do if you're the Hunters? Is it, uh, you know, lineup-wise? Is it just changing more compositions? Is, uh, I believe we do have subs for both teams going into this map. Yep. And we'll see, we, we're generally used to Shanghai making substitutions, sort of, yeah. uh, between map one and two, and so on and so forth. But is Yongxiao Long coming in here for Bacon Jan? The first time we've seen him on the Overwatch League stage. People have sort of talked about, you know, I've seen him at the arena, I'm going to see him soon. And this is a very highly regarded DPS player. If, you're ever, if you remember a miraculous youngster uh, over in the Chinese scene, who are a very strong team, he uh, hails from them and Gregory subs in for DM. Uh, Gregory usually comes in uh, for like uh, maps too, so no surprise to see her come in the game. So uh, DM goes out. So do still have Ding in the DPS uh, role though, still in the game, so, and then uh, Young Jin as well. So we'll still be able to make some compositions coming uh, forward as uh, it seems like players just uh, trying to get their uh, settings right, uh, get it to the second. Well, yeah, after they, after yeah. they come on the stage, there's a couple things to set up for Young Jia Long, for example. He, he hasn't played at all, yeah. on stage. Uh, really highly regarded DPS player. Uh, known for his, uh, yeah, his McCree, his Tracy, he plays a bunch of Reaper as well. Uh, it's been a while waiting, I think, for a lot of Chongdu fans to see him hit the stage and again. They've just produced out of seemingly nowhere another top level Chinese player. Well, I know if you're struggling to deal with the Farah play, you may as well bring in your best hitscan player, right? So uh, Paris will be map number two, so uh, we have not seen don't believe we've seen the Hunters play this yet. No, because know. we would have casted it. Yes, you don't know what kind of looks. Uh, maybe you see the Symmetra again, like how they kind of ran on Hanamura. Uh, we'll have to see. It uh, looks like, at least for now, they'll uh, they'll be on defense. I wonder if they run this. Like three damage dealers with an Arisa solo tank on the defensive end. This is an interesting look, because neither of these teams have played this map yet. Dunk Shalong on the defensive Junkrat. You know, Elsa Torbjorn is not a meme. That's real. No, I mean, it's, it's legit. And I think uh, it would be kind of what they want to do, I guess, is set up the turret around the Orisa. And then it's really difficult to dive the Orisa and get it off the position because of the turret, because of the Junkrat, and then Jinmu at range. And just land rockets playing the Farah. So, see, they actually have the turret a little bit further back. So it, it would get like LOS on where Eamon is set up. And you also have it protecting Keo as well. Might make it a little bit riskier to try and flank around that point. We'll see here. Oh, straight away. Ding must have been caught in a trap there. Yang Jia Long just throws in that remote mine to finish it off. And he was supposed to be scouting for the Dragons. And essentially, he did do that job. The Dragon's now going to be switching to... Does Koma stay on this? No, okay, I was going to say. No. Nah. Switch to a 3-3 here. Tried and true. Just a lot of poke damage that's going to come down, though, from the Hunters. I mean, uh... They're getting through these chokes. It's going to be costly. You're going to give 
Look at Jinmu, already at you know 60% oh. and counting towards the barrage. That's such a nasty bio. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough. Well, again, you've got uh, you've got damage coming from weird angles, right? Not only do you have Jinmu from above, but also quite often you'll see Elsa or any tall player throw the turret at an off angle. But again, like I, I kind of mentioned it when they played against Washington because that turret got like seven final blows on King's Road that it can feel like sometimes a seventh player. Consistent source of damage that requires some attention. Yeah, and I mean, for me, this map's not like a Temple of Anubis where you get past that first choke and it kind of opens up a bit. There's multiple routes you can take. It's more like Hanamura, where like there's this singular choke. You can go towards this left door. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like Hanamura in a way. So you see the Rocket Barrage used there, able to get one. This is a dead push for the Dragons. But I, I don't know if you're going to be able to just keep barreling through here. Especially because you need to get to that platform to use the grab run in any type of situation. And look, so. defenders on this map don't have a huge amount of high ground, but they have a little bit. No. And, and it will still allow you to play an Arisa Junkrat style. I mean, on Temple of Anubis, this composition wouldn't have Torbjorn, it would have Widowmaker instead. Yeah. But the concept is the same. So this is now precipitated a switch from the Dragons, which makes sense. Ding can pressure, you know, get rid of that Torbjorn turret if he gets the right angle around the uh, Orisa shield and doesn't have to worry too much about Young Xiao Long. But is this the uh, good old falling into the hunter's trap of trying to play the hunter's game? <laughs> wow. It could be. Uh, we haven't seen much of Gagari Sombra so far, so that's no. going to be interesting. It's a nice little mix-up. She is, of course, a, a flex player on this team. Yongjin Hanzo. Well, that one is definitely a bit newer. So Yongjin Long goes down early. Ding deals with him well. Far is a natural predator for Junkrat. Two for two trade, though, is Gamsu has gone down. Uh, the, the nano boost goes over to the Torbjorn, as usual. Uh, it's uh, also able to pick up one, the turret picks up another one. Uh, so that will be a fight win for the Hunters. Uh, it was a nice roll through from Gansu. He's actually able to knock down two players off of the lower bridge. And uh, it was able to result in some kills for the Dragon, just not enough to be able to make progress on the point. Gregory. Wrapping around the backside, so is Gamsu here. So a two-pronged attack set up seems to be the plan. Young Xiao Long would like to put a stop to this early. So if he can blow up one of these pincer arms, like that. Oh, he gets two! Oh, he got five for the one. I didn't think Gregory was revealed there. I think he just got that one for free. Well, sometimes you high roll, Matt. And, and I mean, now you're going to have to wait. You, you will have Valkyrie and Nano here. Young or, Doomfist, uh, man. With, with the Doomfist into the Junkrat, the Arisa, and the Torbjorn. I, I mean, maybe you're just playing the Doomfist for the one-shot kill potential, but... I mean, you see, like, well, what is the Doomfist going to do in this situation? Like, Not a lot. Forced to punch away for some mobility here in Shanghai. Yeah, I mean. Don't look great on this map so far. they got 15 seconds left to make something happen, but look at this, they're out of position. Koma now being pressured, didn't we? You know what? I was expecting him to barrage that. That's the kind of thing he would do, but Yongjin's gone down, so that Doomfist again didn't really have the design impact. Resurrected, Jinmu thinks twice about trying to barrage the corpse, I'm sure. And Gamsu was so low. Luckily for him, no one's looking at him right now, so he's having to sneak up on that right side. And there it is, the Molten Core. There's a sea of cheese the dragons have to wade through, both in composition and the way the point looks right now. Koma wrapped on the right hand side. Yong Xiao Long is just wrecking them! Justice reigns from above. Gregory forced to switch back towards the Diva towards the end of that round, but it did not work. And the Dragons, after such a good start, Matt, now find themselves very close to losing map number two. I mean, good debut from Young Jin Long. As, uh, you know, picks up nine final blows there. Two rip tire kills uh, playing the Junkrat. So, you know, the Junkrat Torbjorn combination. Sometimes you look at it, you just start like laughing a little bit inside, but the Hunters always seem to make it work, man. Uh, the far play Jin moves strong again, doesn't drop on that half. I have to be pleased with that particular result. The Hunters, especially when we know how strong they are on the attacking side. Let's see if they have to break a bunker or something else. Finding out in a couple moments. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Chongju Hunters found their defense, Matt. In, in their matches previously, sometimes that's been an issue for them, but this gentleman on screen is the, the newest addition, or at least the newest to hit the stage for the Chongju Hunters, had a very solid performance in the Junkrat. Nine final blows, one death, accounting for a good amount of his team's damage, about 8k damage per 10, I think it's about 20. 1 to 2 percent of his team's damage. Uh, what well, hero damage in the first half? So you had uh, Jinmu and Yong Long combined for uh, what, like almost 60 percent of the team damage on Farah and Junkrat. Uh, looks like it here uh, for the Dragons. Uh, you know they, they got to make a, a pretty strong hold here. I think you know this map has actually a really long walk back for the defenders Absolutely. to get to point A. So. I think any type of like trickle scenario definitely heavily favors the Hunters, especially if they play like something like what they have right now, where it looks like to be a fast composition that can dive, get to the point quick. So it looks like the Dragon's gonna make a, an attempt here to play something that the Hunters would play. So they got the, the Bastion, the Torbjorn out, the Farah, uh, with the solo support with that Coma play and Mercy. Yeah, I like that. So it's the Bastion instead of the Junkrat. That Chongdu went for. Chong, Chongdu, slightly different composition, but the idea is the same, right? The Bastion or Junkrat is just there to blow people up, you know, deal most of the damage or at least be a threat that everyone is trying to get rid of. That's when someone like Ding or Yongjin even can get damage done when they're not being focused down. Uh, okay, so this is, a, uh, remember the last week? Oh, okay, completely different look. So last week they ran into a composition like this, the Hunters, and they were not able to break it. And they ran like a like a Sombra Tracer Genji. Now they're going to keep Jinmu on the Fara and they're gonna run quad DPS. So solo support with Evatel. And you're going to have Eamon play the solo tank here. Playing Wrecking Ball. Nan Chalong. Sorry guys. <laughs> Getting rid of that obviously will be helpful, but Young Jin can put it right back up again. Luffy very low here. Shield gone. He has to back away. He can't escape. Elsa comes in with a melee. This is the opening that Chandu Hunters were trying to make this whole time, and it didn't take him very long, I'll be honest with you. Jin moves down to Gregory, but there's two people on the point. One tick is all they need. Gregory has to throw herself at there to keep it going. But Amon just barrels into it. De suits Luffy down now as the rest of the Hunters start to turn their attention to the point properly. Gregory in a mini deeper form. Gets the kill on Yan Chao Long. Don't know how that happened, but it doesn't matter. Chandu had to still get a pretty quick cleanup on Paris, making for a very quick map number two and one and all in the series, Mats. Yeah, I mean, this one not too close. The Hunters put down 19,000 damage over the course of this map to the Dragon 7K. Uh, just there, a uh, big disparity in favor of the Hunters. So uh, they, they steamroll through map number two. No doubt about it. Half time. I'd be interested to see how they break down, especially uh, the, the control map. There wasn't as much to see on Paris, safe to say. But we'll be back with that breakdown and more Overwatch right after this. The Overwatch Week is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch Week.
We got a good one to close out the night. It was the Dragons on our first map, but here you see the tire. Is that YXL? Yeah, he's in the game and he's already causing problems. Big two-piece helps tie this one up at the half. Welcome everybody, it's Bucket. And we got a shock sandwich between Josh and I, yes! Certainly do. Sinatra and Super, you saw them on the stage. They walked away with a 4-0 today and they were happy enough to join us here for halftime. So thank you guys for coming in. And we wanted to get you because Super, you're a nasty main tank and Sinatra, <laughs> yep. you haven't been able to play Tracer this year. You're just constantly tanking as well. So we expected a lot of tank play to focus on in this first half. There wasn't. it's been all DPS. No, there wasn't. So much DPS. Let's go to Li Zhang Tower. This is where it all started. And just talk to me about the Shanghai Dragons DPS duo. Ding and Diem put up 61% of the team's damage. Yeah, Ding, like, his, his fair is probably the best in the league right now. Just because he plays it so much and they practice it so much. And I don't and even know. Sombra. Yeah, and his Sombra is really good. I, I, I can tell that you watch my stream because that's what I always say. I don't watch his stream. I don't watch his stream. You just get it all from me. No, I don't that's, think so. That's how I know. Exactly. As we take a look at some of the highlights, you can see the work they were doing. It was a Reinhardt battle to start things off. We saw a May coming in for the Hunters on the other you side. Know, of course, I, it was. I think Gams's Ryan got a lot better than it did last stage or last season because last season everyone like made fun of him for his Ryan says, "Oh, he's a Winston one trick." But I actually think he got a lot better this season. Yeah, something that really, something that I always wonder when I look at Chengdu play and I see how good Eamon is as well on the Wrecking Ball and obviously his Ryan's actually pretty decent now as well is, we've never seen him play Wisdom even in Contenders. Like, how is it he not being punished for that? Do you just not need to play it at the moment? Uh, I mean, I guess when you're like Chengdu and your teams don't know what you're going to play, you can just play whatever and hope it works. I mean, it's a pretty, like, if they don't know what you're going to do, then you can do anything. <laughs> I, like, there's just no convention with this team. They just do whatever they want. Sinatra, for the Dragons today, did you expect them to be running such DPS-heavy comps? What were your expectations knowing that Chengdu would be facing off against the Dragons later? Oh, I only expect DPS from Shanghai. I mean, we scrim them, and Ding is, like, actually nasty at every DPS hero, so... Every like, DPS? Yeah. Which one's the scariest to play against as a tank? Farah, for Farah? sure. Farah, yeah. All day, every day. In the second map, things didn't go so well for yeah. the Dragons, though. Chengdu yeah. shows off... YXL uh, comes yeah. in, causes problems on the Junkrat, but... The, the GOATS was a, was an interesting uh, pick here, the 3-3 three, three tanks support, but... I mean, because they're going into fair Junkrat, and then they just kind of got flattened. I mean, the Torb turret was uncontested, they, they just got run over. It seems like the top three teams at the moment are trying to play as much, like, tr triple tank, triple support, GOATS as, as possible. But when you're playing against a composition like this, I mean, you, you would have to switch off. What do you think is the answer to a combo like this, though? Uh, I mean, I, th I think you can make different things work. I, but it's it's really hard to run goats, so I, I think you probably want to go more like spam, so you can like break down the Arisa shield, and then that way you can like move into position better. Because if that Arisa stays up there, then the Junkrat stays up there, and you just you take too much damage. Or you can like goats with Baptiste. Yeah, you that's yeah. Like you guys have been or playing or a ton of that, right? Yeah, I mean it's really good when people are playing like Bash and Junkrat stuff like that, like bunkering comps, and you can just like rush them really hard with the mortality field. Now, we got lunch with you guys earlier today, and the one map you said you were looking forward to was King's Row. Oh, you wanted yeah. to see King's Row in the second half. That's coming up on the other side of the break. <laughs> Why is that? They're, this whole front row is so pretty. I like yeah. uh, I why mean, did you guys want to see King's Row? What do you but, have? Ex why are you excited for map so, three? So we scrim Shanghai a few times, and I, I don't want to leak their strats, but... They're nasty. Yeah, they, they do some nasty things on King's Row. Yeah. Very, very um, non-conventional. So, Sinatra, let's get the prediction. Who closes this one out? Is it the Dragons or the Hunters winning Shanghai, today? Sure. Yeah, Shanghai. 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 Okay. I think Shanghai. Right. I think Shanghai. With that said, yeah. Shanghai fans lining up here in the Blizzard Arena. With that said, let's take a wider look, though, at Stage 2, because the Hunters are off to a blistering start. They're 2-0 and right now. They have a chance to make it three straight. Looking forward, they've got the Gladiators, they've got the Spark and the Spitfire at our Dallas Homestead, and they close things out against the Valiant. So of those seven matches, how many do they win? I think they're only winning Valiant. <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah, honestly. So Bren reckoned they go undefeated this season as well. Is he just <laughs> buying into the Aemon hype too much? Uh, I mean, they, they do have a pretty tough skill. I think, I think Gladiators and Spitfire especially are going to be hard for them. Um, I, I think Spark's winnable and Valiant's winnable, but it, it's not easy. Yeah. It's going to be tough. All right, on the other side, you picked the Dragons to win it today. Let's take a look at their remaining stage two because they're the opposite. 
They started 0-2, a weak start here, but you had to go up against some juggernauts. From here on out, you play the Mayhem, the Outlaws, the Justice, the Shock. You said that maybe we would see four wins for the Hunters, if not definitely three. How many wins for the Dragons out of seven? I think if I've the Dragons win today, they'll win four matches and then lose to us, yeah. obviously. Um, <laughs> but then... I think they win all and then lose to us. Yeah. yeah. Feeling good about it? All yeah. right, give me a player to watch each for the second half. Who you guys keep keeping eyes on? Ding. And... I'm, just, I'm gonna say Amon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just because he's nasty. Yeah. Everything he does is inspirational. I look up to him. <laughs> it's yeah. just flashy and creative. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> All right, well, we got our predictions from our pros. Blizzard Arena, can we give a big cheer to our shock men? We've got Sinatra, we've got Super, and when we come back, it's still the Hunters taking on the Dragons at Game 3 coming your way after this. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best. debut of a new player, Yang Xiaolong for the Chongzhu Hunters. Propels them to a second Mac victory. They look very comfortable in there. And we actually had Danny Lim speak uh, during halftime over towards the Shanghai staff. Yeah. They just said, we were not ready for what we, you know, we had coming at us on the map of Paris, uh, especially with Yang Xiaolong coming. And we didn't know what we didn't know what to expect from how they were going to set up the really? team pumps. And uh, they, were, they were caught off guard. I'm just repeating what they said, bro. We've seen them run like uh, Arisa, Torvior, and like this is But they haven't played hunters. Paris yet. They have no Paris type to go. That's classic hunters, though. <laughs> I mean, the what is classic hunters? They just, they just, <laughs> they like get the list of heroes and they just like hit the keyboard on the head a couple times yeah. or whatever they get. It's like what they're playing. Hey, I love it. Better. I love it when everybody's thinking like, oh, we can play, you know, triple tank, triple support. Like you saw, like the hunters, I, I, the hunters really kind of threw them for a loop. When I know like the shot guys are talking about, it, and it's so confusing whether they they swap the dragons to triple tank, triple support on offense and they just get rolled, because there's nothing that you can do. I mean, you're running into so much damage with the Junkrat and the Farah. I mean, there are situations where 3-3 does not look very good. That was one of them. So, Diem is back. Degri subbed out briefly. The Dragons hoping just to get this game back under their control. Talking to Super and Sinatra, as we heard from them during a halftime show. Thanks, guys, for joining, by the way. Uh, they definitely felt that Shanghai was still the dominant team, Matt. They felt like King's Row was one of those maps where you really might see something spicy. 
Nice. I'm all about them fire noodles. Bring it. So right now, this for the Dragons, it just looks like a uh, you know a little bit of an old school defense with the Junkrat Widowmaker setup. So when you see Diem come in, you know his Widowmaker is pretty nasty. So you throw him out on that hero. It's, uh, the Roadhog on defense is kind of interesting. We saw teams play a lot of it on offense. Shield pressure, get that first pick, run over the point. I don't mind it though, especially if you're worried about you know Tracer Sombra getting into your back line. Here we go. <laughs> uh, uh, Elsa. Okay, we've seen this before. From Teleports his buddies all over the map. Please. Now, last time he teleported them off to the right. Uh, we'll have to see if he chooses to do that again or will actually... Oh, they're going to play on the point. This is a variation. He's changed the formula, man. <laughs> and then he just like probably turns his back and throws the turrets out. Oh my yeah. gosh, they just got clapped, man. Oh, the biotic grenade. That was gross. Luffy just jumped straight oh. up on top of them with that. I mean, they get to the point. They just get absolutely slaughtered once they get there. But well, that's great if it's a marathon, but it's Overwatch. <laughs> not just not about just getting to the point. Yeah. So Elsa will uh, get his sim ultimate off of this, uh, the photon barrier, the big barrier they can put in the way. So all right, here we go. Uh, Jin Mu wants to go with the offensive junk rat now. Yeah. Well, Shanghai so, know all about that one. Inspired by the dragons. So. I mean, okay, if he gets teleported into a spot where he can get bad value out of it, like the right-hand side, maybe that's an, a decent spot. This photon barrier could be pretty effective. It's gonna, it's gonna make it hard for DM, to be honest. So, okay, Barry goes up and, well, they've already lost Evil Tal and Jinmu early in that fight. Yeah. Looks fancy, but there's a lot of smoke and mirrors, you know? I like the trimmings, but... Well, so here's the issue. When the Sim Teleporter comes out, you know they're going to go through it. So Ding just spams the, the Teleporter. Yeah, if you look at this. <laughs> Hang on. Well, the problem with that is that they can't get the Immortality field up quick enough. It could be because, you know, maybe Geo wasn't didn't go through the teleporter early enough. Maybe you should have gone through first. There is a bit of a time delay on that, on that yeah. actually being effective. And they all got, they lost two plays before that even went down. All right, so Jinmu goes in, dies immediately uh, on the Genji, but some changes, uh, you know, Eamon goes over and he'll play Wrecking Ball as uh, Elsa switches over to Divas. So something a little bit more conventional here uh, for the Hunters. Lots of ultimates available here. For the dragons use both support ultimates if they need. Don't tell long. Gonna start stalling out the point. In fact, he actually gets rid of DM early. Now what do the dragons work with? They really need to get Ding in a position to do some serious damage. And he's gonna try and do just that. Sending himself air mail in the direction of the Chongju hunters. They also got hit with a body grenade there, was actually able to withstand the damage. But Shanghai have moved on the point. And like, what do you do about this composition that plays around Orissa with Supercharger up? And with the Valkyrie there, it's very hard for Chongyu to find an opening. The, the Hunters do get over the line, and they do get the second tick. So, some ultimates used here for the Dragons. Now, if you come back and you're the Hunters, you'll have a Nano Boost here, which uh, with no Dragon Blade probably goes over to the Wrecking Ball player. And then you also have an EMP that's going to be available. Yongjin playing quite close to DM here, expecting someone like Jinmu or someone similar to try and jump on the Widowmaker. Then he can throw the hook in and get the kill. Just like that one, Yongjin along caught up by that one, forced to translocate out. Now he has an EMP, so a couple seconds before he could even translocate in, even if he wanted to. Amon's put to sleep, that's the EMP, but it only catches on towards Koma and Gamsu here. So those two need to be removed immediately. And they are, surely enough. Koma's able to get alive there, but Ding gets rolled over the top of. And Chandu will be able to take the point now, but that EMP was really what got the job done. Yeah, it was huge. The EMP, they're able to use the nano boost on Heyman and get in there, make a play as Young Jia Long will switch over and play Zarya now. So a triple tank look here for the Dragons. Nothing too, uh, for the Hunters, nothing too crazy for the Dragons. Uh, triple tank Genji. That's yeah, a thing. Okay. Well, I, I, well, I was gonna say maybe you're setting up for a nano blade, but you're not really close to the nano. So, brickless hunters now. Into the next fight, Yongjin having already switched here. Ding! Oh, he's oh. Oh. Out of it. He's out to get the dragon blade. Gets Luffy as well. That's two for him. Straight on in. Oh, he gets the tire. Ding going for the rip tire. <laughs> that's right. Jinmu caught it, and he didn't just dash through the tire, Matt. He actually destroyed the tire with a swing of the dragon blade. All right. Come on, fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah, that's why you play the the triple tank wrecking ball main tank with the Zarya and the uh, Genji. I've seen I've seen the light. Look, sometimes it's okay for things not to make sense and work. 
That's okay. That is also how metas are developed, so... Yeah. Who thought that now I don't, now, would be such a great combo? Now I don't know if that will be the meta, but... <laughs> sure. Yo, yeah, pretty much got himself an Ana boost off of that body grenade. Throws a sleep dart in, that one didn't connect, and he gets shattered oh, as a result. Shatter. And he hit the right. That shadow may not have come through, but the shield was up for Gamsu, and then he drops the hammer. Backing up here now, gets himself a Zarya bubble that makes him safe enough to try and charge back in the direction of the rest of his team. But Luffy's down. Yang Xiaolong missing. Gamsu gets hit by a sleep dart this time, to be sure. But Kyo is only able to get that right hard, and they're going to be forced back by Shanghai. You know, I tell you what, the, the, the Hunters may have fought that a little bit more. If Young Jian Long stays alive, they actually almost get Gamsu down. And if they get Gamsu down before uh, Aemon falls, they probably turn around, shatter right away, and you have a chance to actually keep that going if you're the Hunters. But you lose just a few more players. Ding now with his EMP. EMP, Graviton Surge here available for the Dragons. It's gotta be crippling this EMP. Pretty simple there. Early grab, I like that for Young Xiaolong. Oh. Maybe they're expecting to go into an EMP because that one did not look good. Only Elsa and Jinmu got hit by that. And Aemon hits a big Earth Shatter. He gets to go well. He gets booped up and he gets a little bit too high and he actually only connects with Elsa with that EMP. Remember, EMP is an infinite range. It operates like a sphere around the Sombra. So if you aren't close enough to the ground, then you won't catch people in that. Only two. And if you're hitting Elsa and Jinmu, and you're not hitting Yang Xiao Long running the supports or the other supports. Uh, That's good. I would love to know who hit him there. Was it Elsa bumping into him with the mech? That kind of makes the most sense because Elsa's the only one that gets hit with that EMP there. Most likely. Gamsu Lo gets himself a Zarya bubble here. Okay. Oh, they throw out the Graviton Surge. Jinmu's gone down now as well. So this is definitely where you capitalize as Shanghai. Asleep, not really an issue for DM. He probably needs to recharge his batteries anyway. Rally, nano boost for Chongdu. Elsa switching to the Sombra now. I mean, yeah, <laughs> can't blame him. Nice to see, uh, yeah, more of that Ding Sombra come out. We actually yeah. uh, pointed out a few weeks ago that Ding was not able to get much out of that EMP. In fact, Shanghai were losing fights on average more when they use that EMP. Yeah, we watched him play against the Fuel and uh, they now look great in that one. They kind, of, they kind of did Sombra, made it hard for him to get into range. That's the Graviton Surge here for the Chongdu Hunters. One kill is good, but they might need a little bit more than that. Luffy did use a Transcendence, and there is Yongjin going down. And that will be Luffy going down in just a couple moments. Kome will try and skip away. He does. He has that sound barrier for the next fight. So the Dragons are well positioned here, at least in terms well, of having an EMP coming. I think what you can try and do if you're the Hunters is get Elsa to get a hack off on Nagamsu here, then land a big shatter. They have to kind of play in this open space. It's like, what kind of angle can Elsa get to get this hack no, off? No, not many, maybe from above, Matt, but it's yeah. pretty likely. Gamsu oh, they don't need a hack! That's <laughs> huge! Gamsu gets knocked to the ground. Yongjin Yong there as well. Two very important players were connected with there. The problem was there was a sound barrier still in effect. With no EMP, the Hunters couldn't really take that off the table. I like that, though. I like them Earth Shatters with no setup, but there's only 10 seconds left now for Chongdu, Matt. That I means uh, it looks like Jinmu is going to be the one who has to get a touch as he's playing Wrecking Ball. He gets knocked back. You may not get there. There's a grab. It looks like everybody's locked up. <laughs> oh, Jinmu was living the absolute nightmare there. Not only he charges in, he gets shield bashed, he gets whip shot backwards by Brigitta, then he gets hacked, then he gets stunned again. Tough stuff for the Hunters to get back to the point and not quite finishing off the map. Now we're still waiting expectantly to see the this special source that the Dragons are supposed to be bringing here on the King's Row, Matt, that might be something that we get to see on their attack now. We're heading to the uh, break in just a moment here, give the teams a chance to swap sides. Zero time left in the bank. Chongdu not finishing the map. Let's see if Shanghai can exceed that length. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
And we are back here in King's Row. Second half about to kick off from the Shanghai Dragons. It's up to them to attack now. With Chengdu failing to finish the map. Shanghai, in theory at least, know exactly what they have to do. And by comparison, it's not the toughest push on a map like King's Row. We've seen what else is Torbjorn turrets though do do on King's Row. More than <laughs> I expect. More than the normal as uh, standard hunters here on Z. Arisa, Torbjorn, Widowmaker with the Farah. Do they run this double main tank set up here with the, with the Roadhog map? It's like double dive tanks with, I mean, the Hog good to sit the point, the double dive tanks to make an issue. So, uh, no. I switch off that. It could uh, be because of the, the Farah sort of setup. So what you could do uh, is like with the pile driver of Wrecking Ball to knock people up above the shield, kind of like how a halt works, and then the hooks could come through. A little bit harder to set up than a halt and putting your tank at more of a risk, but still. Oh, what Gamsy's doing? He's just seeing the sights right now. He's chilling. Sitting in that back corner. There's no real spot Gamsy can stand here without being shot by someone. But he's okay to absorb a bit of damage, but lets his teammates get in position. Ding currently wrapped in a, quite the duel up against Jinmu. One more shot, we'll get the job done, and he's very low. Oh, there it is! Ding gets the man! And Evil Tail gonna go down as well. Youngjin was able to find that. Lacking off the back of a hook, and the Chongju Hunters already looking much worse for wear. Youngjin, that's a face full of shrapnel for Amon. Don't think he can make a meal out of that one. Uh, that, that Ding Fara is wild. I mean, uh, just in that first fight right there, uh, what, 11 rocket direct hits. I wonder, what, I wonder why you switched the like a May into a, a composition that does feature a road Yeah, I don't Farah. really get that. May gets hooked, she's dead. Well, this happens as well. Yeah, like it's fine. Special. I don't have to do damage. I've got other DPS on my team that are doing it. They're fine on their own. Like, if, if Jinmu wanted to as well, he can play a really sick Hanzo. We haven't seen him play as Hanzo in a bit. Like, yeah, uh, Elsa's in trouble. Yep, there he goes. Uh, it's a very light stagger. Okay, so, so now Jinmu plays the Brigitte. So this is a traditional comp. Triple tank, triple support, based around the Reinhardt here for the Hunters. But I feel like the Hunters are getting a taste of their own medicine yeah. here today, right? I feel like the Hunters are the ones that are running out of our yeah. peace, man. So the Shanghai bring in something a little bit different and they don't know what to do about it. Well, it's usually the Hunters who force the opposing team to like play switch three, three. and play 3-3 three, three and just kind of abuse them with all the damage dealers. Today, it's been the Hunters who are trying to fall back on the damage dealers and not play their own game first. Look, this is a the dragon. Are playing decidedly a Chongdu-esque composition with the exception of the Roadhog. And Dio gets through there. That was a headshot on Jinmu. They're not even going to contest this on the second point. Oh, I mean, okay. the, the card's already there. Yeah, uh, you know who's sitting on the payload this whole time? Luffy. Uh, he's, he's that whole the, second stage got completely cancelled out. Phenomenal play. <laughs> With five players, Shanghai were able to camp Chengdu deep within a, a phase that they shouldn't even really be playing in right now. So, no second phase whatsoever for Chengdu. That's completely denied. Th this, How do you come the, back from that? Luffy would be the guy in like ranked to like raise his hand, like, guys, look at my objective time. Look, I did it. <laughs> I want the game for us. So, uh, DM with another kill here on Nikio. This one has not been close. Uh, see, this is what happens with Chengdu when things start to get out of hand. That the chaos that drives them takes them over and makes it impossible for them to regain control in this game. They've let it consume the map. They were supposed to be using it against their foes. They're not going to have another defense from point A all the way through the rest of that. They haven't got near the cart. This map's all been over now. Amon trying to get in there and do some work, but Gamsu playing pinball with him, knocking into the opposition Hammond, making it a little bit harder for Amon to touch the point at all. Evil Tal and Elsa are there right now, and right. has to deal with Amon, who's pressuring a little bit. But I mean, he loves to be in this position, man. Sat behind the payload, nice and safe. Young Chao Long, though. The McCree switch, he's known for it. Finally able to curb the enthusiasm of the dragons. Yeah, now Koma pops a Valkyrie here towards the end, so you expect a switch up here for the dragons as they uh, do not have much further to go, like uh, less than five meters. I mean, the payload's moving back, but... This is a comp that essentially, yeah. I, I'm glad that Yang Jelong switched to McCree there. Uh, McCree not gonna do a hell of a lot against 3-3, three, three, even if it was like 2-3 yeah. with a Sombra. So now they swap back. 
Ryan 3 3 versus Ryan 3 3. So Ooh. Ding gonna play Sombra here. They had to use a repair pack on Luffy right now. A bit more damage on Gamsu will allow the Dragons or the Chanas to get a little bit more aggressive here. Support all from both sides. Rally used by Shanghai to come forward now. And Gamsu, there it is. He couldn't stay alive. Even with that rally healing, that was about all they had. Ding, it's the EMP, but it's a little bit too late to make a difference in this fight. But I think that's what you're playing around for the Dragons. Like, it, you come in with a big EMP, you land a shatter, and the map is yours. I mean, you have three minutes to make this work. As uh, we can take a look, uh, Young John Long's McCree highlight here. They will pick up three. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he even he knows who he flashed there, but it doesn't yeah. matter. Nice connections there. Good little uh, small corrections on aim. Oh, the fight's on though. EMP are used by the Shanghai Dragons now. Gamsu went for the Earth Shadow, tried to follow it up, and it worked. Amon and Jinbu were hacked up. Kyo also was unable to use his abilities. Amon yeets that one straight into the shield again. No result from him, and there was a bit of desperation to be sure for the Chongyu Hunters, and I don't blame them. Shanghai now looking very scary, and they're about to take this map away. See, right in the back corner there is Yang Jia Long sitting with a Graviton Surge. There needs to be follow up, and there isn't going to be a lot of it. Yang Jia Long gets bopped immediately. And there it is, King's Row. Shanghai Dragons edge back out in front in this series. Two and one. And one map away from taking their first win off stage. Two, and they need it by now. I mean, that map seems close, but it's really not. The Dragons dominated on their offensive attack. One map away from taking this series against the Hunters. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. in this series in favor of the Shanghai Dragons. The King's Road looked excellent, Matt. We don't often see teams on the attack yeah. sort of deny that entire second phase of the map purely by pushing deep in an enemy territory and preventing them from contesting a payload. You leave one player on the payload, well, let them just sit there for like a minute, get that objective time up. Good as know, gone. Uh, maybe they learned that from scrimming the shark, the, the Dragons. You know, probably the shark pushing all the way up into their spawn. They're like, hey, that kind of works. Yeah. Don't we try not I wonder to if we can do it against someone who's not in the shark. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you could definitely see that uh, Super and Sinatra had some insights uh, that they maybe didn't share about their timing against the Dragon. Yeah. So we'd say they're probably, you know, relatively frequent scrim partners. They're playing a lot uh, right now in general, those two teams respectively. So this man on your screen is going to be joining the Watchpoint Disc. They're going to have to uh, obviously make it a little bit larger uh, to make room for this guy's bulk. But he's going to be there flexing with the rest of the crew. That'd be really interesting to actually get some thoughts straight from Amon yeah. as well, because he's been a player that has just, you know, risen in popularity, uh, and he's been pretty quiet about it. You know, he's gone out, he's just achieved. He did make a Twitter account recently, and <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah, at, but... it's uh, at Amon OWL, by the way, if you're looking for that. So, you know, he started to allow himself to uh, be in a spotlight, which is great. So I look forward to hear from him. And hopefully, uh, Bren has no oranges or anything there, uh, you know, potentially. Some harm. Oh, let's be honest. Aemon definitely wanted to squeeze on his head. Who wouldn't? I can't <laughs> blame the guy. Here's your Zen head-to-heads, and 
I'm seeing a bit of a disparity between these two here, man. Yeah, you know what? Like, I feel like Luffy goes under the radar in terms of Zen's. Like, it, it's really easy when you look at like the, the top teams. You're like, oh yeah, they're, they're, he's fantastic. He's a yellow player, one of the best in the league. Like, I, I feel like every time, at least I've watched Shanghai or cast Shanghai, he's really had strong performances uh, all throughout. So. Uh, you saw him there on the Ana as well during the match. But I feel like uh, the supports for the Dragons, uh, a very strong core with Luffy and Coleman. No doubt about it. Bacon Jack comes back in here. So Young Xiao Long back to the bench after what I would say has been a pretty successful debut. Saw him uh, flash that McCree pick a little bit earlier on. And Gatorade returns. DM back to the bench. And, and like what team learns a little bit more about the substitutions that come out here? I think it's probably the Hunters. Uh, with Gregory coming in, you kind of think that the Dragons want to play either you know, more triple tank or uh, you know at least 2-2-2. Two, two, two. As uh, we look now, as we go to Junker Town, I uh, don't know what you'll see these teams run. I mean, uh, Bastion, obviously, very strong on offense on Junker Town. I have to ask some of our uh, pro players about the rise of this Roadhog pick, this little pocket Roadhog that we're seeing a little bit. Even on ladder, he's he's played a ton now. Yeah, Yongjin obviously using it on defense on King's Road to essentially protect, you know, his Widowmaker and stuff like that. We might see it on attack here, but well, Kyo might want to play it on defense at so, the Chongju here. So I mean, Roadhog's strengths, I guess, are deterring the flankers, right? Uh, obviously, being extremely survivable alone. Yep. Uh, lots of shield pressure, which when you have like. Our races with flankers in the game, and you're not really trying to have to dedicate a lot of resources to certain players. It, it makes sense, the hog. Also, of course, the pulled pork combo where the Orisa throws out the pulse and you hook the, the target getting pulled in. That is open to you with this setup, although it's not the centerpiece of your team comp. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, God, how do I keep him alive? <laughs> oh, it may not matter though, because Amon just gets completely splattered and ding. Yeah. I think if you uh, you could rewind time 10 seconds, uh, they would have let Jinmu <laughs> they would have let Jinmu die to keep Aemon alive. Absolutely, but. and you know what? It's crazy being here in this arena for a man because you can feel the sound of that Bastion minigun in your stomach. Oh yeah, it uh, just creates this rumble. You know it. that someone's getting slapped around on the battlefield. Yeah, <laughs> this is one of the more frustrating comps to deal with. The one that the dragons are running with the Batiste. The Arisa and the Bastion, especially when you're playing it on offense. Well, look at this. Yeah, stat deprecation matrix being used there, and Amon just gets completely melted down. And for Ding, he hasn't really been pressured much from this position, Matt. Luffy actually had that immortality field <laughs> drop on top of him, so. The, the celebratory DPI update, yeah. 100 swing around the mouse. So uh, that'll be the first point in favor of the Dragons. Uh, right uh, right there, you only had uh, the, the first use of the Amp Matrix by Luffy, but uh, that was 471 damage amplified. So that, that, that's a few eliminations right there just off of that. Absolutely. And now what the Dragons are trying to do is similar to what we saw on King's Road. They're trying to deny parts of this map away from Chongju and deny them a chance to set up a defensive foothold. Now, eventually Shanghai are forced back, but that's not the point. The point is that they give time for the payload to push past that annoying high ground part at the start of this area. So everything's going right for Shanghai right now. Self-destruct from Gregory over the top. Nothing found with that one. And Jinmu's going to respond with a rip tire across the breach. But Amon is down and Ding. It's going to do some work. Banker Jack can hardly peek out. <laughs> Just watch that self-destruct come down. He stays alive. The immortality field working. The amplification matrix wasn't something you could do a lot with. Ding there, cute, trying to go for a little bit of a jump up the top and pick off the Hanzo. Kyo at range there, tries to go for a hook, but the Hunters now are getting flattened. I'm actually shocked that, like, the kings of, like, the wacky comps are being out wacky comped by the Dragons in a way that the Dragons are throwing interesting looks. Not looks that we haven't seen other teams do, but I guess interesting looks because the, the Hunters are usually the ones always setting the pace, and they haven't been able to deal with it at all. Dragon Strike fight on the left side to deny movement, and Ding and Luffy were hiding in wait. Gamsu is able to survive that, but there will be reinforcements from Chongdu to try and extricate him from the situation, and they've done so. <laughs> it's kind of wild looking at some of the healing as well for the Dragons uh, with Koma and Luffy. I would say, yeah, you know, Batiste and Mercy both in the main support category. Sure. And Batiste, Batiste a little bit different. But, uh, but when Luffy was playing Batiste, he had 57% of the team's overall healing, like over 5k healing there at the beginning, which is 
pretty nuts. More than double a comb. And remember, amplification matrix boosts his healing yes. as well. So that's sometimes you see these insane peaks in, in healing done. Remember, you don't get you don't get healing stats for people that are full health, right? So it still needs to be on people that are taking damage. Over healing does not count. Here's a riptide though. Gegory getting desuited there, and wow, that's that's pretty mean. Let's see if she gets out of the match. She's playing the Smithereens. Jinmu though falls, so. Ding is able to find a kill there, but Shanghai are struggling to get a foothold here, Matt. They sort of force, they force the way out of the high ground, but they get themselves a little bit split. That's it. And now it'll be interesting for the Dragons. They go with uh, Gamsu on the Winston. Try and get behind this Arisa shield, but... Now, Winston definitely susceptible to get blown up here by the, the Hanzo, the Junkrat with a Discord orb on him. How do you keep Gamsu alive through all of that? Oh, yeah. The bubbles like are going to get burned. Dive setup. Yeah. All right, so now we change it. So you go over to Reinhardt here. So you bring in the Reinhardt, come and play uh, as you try and just, it's still going to be hard. You're going to have to get the speed boost past the Orisa shield. Fortunately, Lucio will do that for you. Dragon Strike, though, Baker Jack. There's not really that many places for the Dragons to go to avoid the damage to that. And Gamsu got caught. He couldn't back up because of that Dragon Strike. And now the Hunters are trying to make it a little bit more painful for the Dragons. But Gagory finds Kia with that self destruct. Oh, did not move. OK, bit of a turnaround here. And the Dragons now have four players to push forward with. Gagory straight to the high ground. And all the Hunters have absconded back towards their spawn. Does that look like a fight originally that was not going to go? in the Dragon's favor, but Giggory with his self-destruct, Luffy with one, and Kyo getting with another, yeah. Blown up before he could transcend it. But self-destruct will do that to you. I mean, if you don't realize you're going to get killed by it, you're not going to use your ultimate to, to get invulnerability. Yeah. So this is where you see the Hunters not able to play Winston here. They opt to play Wrecking Ball with three tanks and a Junkrat into this. Riptide needs to be big. Gregory trying to shut down Jinmu, and she does. So Jinmu gets removed from the fight already. The Riptide does nothing. So that Junker really not earning its keep in that previous fight. And Ding is extremely well charged up here and in a great position to get the cleanup done. The Dragons have a huge amount of time in the time bank for, you know, for Junker Town standards right now, Matt. Yeah. And again, it comes down to the Hunters not having a solid defense on second stage or first. Now I think of it. Keo's down. Earth Shadow there catches Evil Tile. The Banker Jack had his eye shield up, so he doesn't get knocked down, but he still gets ganged up on by everybody on the Shanghai Dragons. Amon drops in, Adaptive Shield is going to be at max for him there, so we can slink away with a degree of safety. Trying to stall things out, he gets shield bashed and removed from the fight, and there it is, the Shanghai Dragons. A very successful attack here on Junkertown. Push straight through first and second without any real issue, man. I have to say, they look good, uh -huh. and they've got plenty of time in the bank. Two minutes, eight seconds. I mean, really strong first half there on Junkertown. We usually see teams fall apart a bit after the Bastion on the cart doesn't work, but the Dragons able to make the compositional changes. They lose like one or two fights after that, but uh, I know it's really the fight where uh, Gegger, Youngjin, and Luffy just stay alive on the cart. They're able to kind of power through. They get Kyo before they get the Transcendence off. And that's really the fight that helps propel them over the line. Well and truly, with time to spare, I think it makes a huge difference. And now, and the Hunters can go for a pirate ship setup. We've seen that from them before. Uh, I don't know if Symmetra is going to be an option for them here. Or not. Uh, there are some circumstances in which it makes sense. It's a little bit harder uh, on pure escort maps because obviously the map changes around you as you advance. There are some areas that just are great for Symmetra, some that are uh, not good. Sim here in the open space. Uh. <laughs> Actually, I, well, I, I, there, I have seen it in a contenders game, it was actually a while ago, uh, go used at that last area because it's so open, right? Like a yeah, barrier yeah. there can actually really turn the fight in your favor. Dude, but the, the sim ultimate is actually crazy, like in certain scenarios. Well, what studies is one way. <laughs> yeah. So you can fire through it. Like what kind of barrier does that? You can shoot through it, but your opponent can't. That's so unfair. I mean, I all the barriers. Well, yeah, that's right. That's a, but the, the, the sheer size of it as well is what makes yeah, it so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so oppressive. It's like 5,000. But that's great. Yeah, you're inside a Winston <laughs> barrier behind a Ryan shield. He's got like 20k health or something. It's nutty. Anyway, I digress. There will be a bit of a pirate ship set up for the Chongdu Hunters here with the... I mean, a little bit of attention will be on Jinmu, I suppose. There's not a lot of healing for Jinmu. There's plenty of self-healing for Kyo. So that Mercy's going to be stuck pretty much to the Bastion. So Bacon Jack may not get a bunch of damage boosting oh. here. It might be all invested in Jinmu. Uh, and the Dragons opt for three tanks here and not a second damage dealer, so they have... It's really Gregory. She needs to pressure out Bacon Jack here. That pick is massive. The Resurrect taken off the table immediately for the Shanghai Dragons. I mean, Bacon Jack. Yeah, they're just, super dead. He just kept Gregory busy the entire time. She couldn't help the rest of her team, and 
all she was really able to achieve was harassment on Baker Jack. But, I mean, maybe that was the bait. The rest of the Chongju Hunters just cut a swath through did, the dragon. Did, I mean, look, you don't have Diem in the game, right? Who's playing your Widowmaker? So do you do you have somebody out there for the dragons right now that can play the Widowmaker? Or do you keep trying to roll with this? As it stands, no big changes in the, the dragons here. Luffy's uh, immortality field didn't really do much for the dragons previously in the fight. Just got picked off straight away. But over the course of the game, though, he has prevented eight deaths with that immortality field. So, has made an impact. Uh, oh, again, a hook to start the fight, Matt. Twice yeah. now. I, I questioned that pick for Kyo just because there wasn't much healing available for Dinmu, but he's one of them two fights with picks. You know, I know Gregory did get in, use the defense matrix there, but she can't commit a long time because she's going to drop as well. Oh, Baker Jack finds the head of Coma. There it is again. The Widow's down on the Mercy. Well, Mercy is down, and that means no resurrect, although it had just been used by Coma in a prior fight. That's uh, that's rough. Neither of these teams really able to find their feet defensively on this map, which is not that uncommon. Even, uh, the, even some of our best, most defensive teams get to a map like this and then realize that uh, they, you know, they keep getting snowballed out of the game. So the Dragon's answer is triple tank, no Brigitte, and you're going to run the Batiste. So you're going to run Reinhardt. This Reinhardt shield's going to get rocked. Dinner. Trying it's to gone or, uh, yeah. yeah. Yongjin tried to go for an immortality field, Matt. It didn't last long. Both Yongjin and Gamzu being down now, so perhaps Gegory can try and interfere with Jinmu somewhat here, but looks like she got desuited there by Elsa's self destruct. She may not have been expecting that at all, and Chongju have hardly had a break in stride across this map. So, I feel bad for Gamzu. We've all been that Reinhardt player at home. He comes out of the spawn, puts his shield up, and then all you hear is like that his shield is. Yeah. Breaking. It's just a sigh of resignation. The team's screaming at you, oh, shield us. I'm like, yeah, and they, and they try to keep him alive using like the immortality field, defense matrix, but it's just too much damage. Nice high ground this control cute. here, yeah. We don't see this very much at all. Usually this uh, uh, stays on the payload. How do you cross it with the dragon? Uh, you wait for the right time to walk across. Oh, nice. The platformer, but Gregory finds the pick there. It's only a resurrect back on a Jinbu, and Baker Jack's fighting kills in the background. First Luffy, then Yongjin. Two supports have fallen to the Widow's Kiss. And actually, we get to sit back up on the payload again and just keep spewing bullets at the dragons, the hunters here. I mean, talk oh. about a triple threat. Kyo, Baker, Jack, Jinmu, all deadly in different parts of the map. I mean, you're trying to get the Bastion off of the card or off of the high ground, and that requires Gregory to jump and use the defense matrix, but does not allow her to go up and contest the Widowmaker. It's very difficult. There's no, there's no real great answer for this. Baker Jack with nine final blows so far. Nasty. Yongjin, okay, that, so the immortality field is down. Yongjin does fall. Degri goes for the chase on Baker Jack and finds a kill, but there's a mercy here, of course, for the hunters. They've been leveraging that extensively. Look at the earth shot. Gamsu can't follow up on it because they didn't hit Jinmu. Finally, they're able to charge the Bastion down and get rid of him. And finally, a chance to, to take a breath. And the hunters. May not be able to continue with the Bastion play here, but knowing them, they probably try for one more fight. No, Jinmu, very disciplined. Yeah, they, I mean, we saw them be very disciplined the other day as well. They switch off of it, even though they had the Bastion ultimate. So they're going to go with the standard. Oh, no, they're going to play a. Uh, they're deciding. Okay, Jinmu switches between Batiste and Brigitte a few times, decides to play the Batiste. So doesn't see the Brigitte on the other side, wants to get an immortality field of his own. No shadow there. I think it was from the backside. Gamsu tried to just Whip. throw that in yeah. after he dropped down. I uh, didn't find much. Sound barrier for the dragon, so this might help them a little bit. Immortality field being stretched to its very limits for the Chongdu Hunters, and finally it, it buckles under the pressure. So much damage for the dragons was available, sort of even late in that fight, and that partly is the work of Ding. After Bacon Jack sort of fell about midway through. Yes, uh, Gamsu tries to go for like a flanking shatter. And uh, when he turns corner, it's like, you know, Eamon's so far ahead, but Bacon Jack is what he's like trying to line up with Eamon, but uh, Bacon Jack had a personal bubble as Zarya, so pops it right away. So didn't get knocked down by that. It'll be a self-destruct here to open things up from Gengary. Connects with Jinmu, gets rid of the immortality field. That's any type of push the Hunters would have had. And that's big. It's a fight one with a self-destruct where there weren't like a bunch of other abilities used to set it up. In fact, Jinmu wasn't really being touched at the time in the fight. He just couldn't escape from it. The placement from Gregory was really good. and It was very fast. There was a sound barrier to, to yeah. start that off. So the Hunters were like, well, I guess we're dead. I, I mean, she's had a fantastic fourth game.
leads the lobby in eliminations, leads the lobby in final blows, uh, four self-destruct kills. Good day for Gagari so far. Yongjin goes down to Kyo early here. And interesting amplification matrix use there before the Dragons had really chose to commit to the fight. No more picks for free for the Hunters though. Jinlu just lobbing grenade after grenade in to keep his team nice and healed up and that's the Transcendence Force that are looping. And yet the Tundas still don't back away, man. You'd think they just disengage here with a Lucio on the team, but they just keep going forward. They might have walked right into a trap though in doing so. Gamsu charges Baker Jack down. He's very healthy still. The Transcendence on the Hunters wasn't enough to keep their main source of damage alive. And Ding now could just sit up the top and laser engrave his name into the backs of the Hunters' heads. 1 minute 33 on the clock. The Dragons are now ahead in time bank and are looking very solid after getting yeah. washed out of the rest of the map. I mean, they're pretty healthy in Ultimates too. They'll have a rally, a self-destruct. They're going to end up having a sound barrier as well. As we can take a look at Gamsu here. So do you go aggressive? Yeah, see, I don't know, man. They force the Transcendence. They still want to go aggressive. That lets Gamsu just walk past the shield of Amon and get a huge shadow. Oh, there's another one, by the way. Okay, yeah, five-man shadow. Oh! The dragons. Oh, the Hunters are going to feel that one in their bones. <laughs> their children are going to feel that in their bones on a cold day. That was brutal. So they use the grab of Bacon Jack. Big shatter from Gamsu. The last one, it was actually, you know, he got by the shield of Eamon because Eamon actually shattered his own. So he was trying to follow up his own shatter, and Gamsu was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll take advantage of this. Gamsu, I mean, he got that wrinkly brain when it comes to the Reinhardt matchup. Okay, that's a sound barrier. Everyone from Tongue to get someone. Interesting, very early mortality field, though. They didn't need it at the time. They had overshield from the sound barrier. So now it's a transcendence here from Kyo. Koma holding his sound barrier. Despite having lost Yongjin, the Dragons are still in a decent spot. Yongjin, oh, he's going to return to the Bastion. This is going to be really nasty. The Hunters are not going to be ready for this switch here. And they might just be walking straight into it. The Shanghai Dragons try and play fairly cannily so far. A little bit cutting. And there it is. Yongjin's in a great position. He needs to move from Elsa's self-destruct, but he'll pop back out in the open with Amon down. Elsa just getting melted. That's going to be it. And the Shanghai Dragons will take Junker Town. And they'll take the series, getting their first win in stage two. Well deserved after a couple of rough games. And the tables get turned on the Chongdu Hunters. They get a taste of the Romanison map, and they don't know how to read the prescription. Yeah, in, in this fourth map, Ding, I mean, Ding throughout the whole series was tremendous. Uh, he casted some games, he had some rough ones. This was a tremendous series from him. And then uh, Gagri here, our final map, she, like I said, Leads the, the lobby, 51 limbs, 19 final blows, tied for the lead with Ding. Real difference maker coming in off the bench for the fourth that map. fourth map for yeah. Gary. Really impressive, especially after coming back off of the bench, being sucked in and out sometimes, it can be hard to sort of find your rhythm. But the Diva play looked very good, Gary, reminding us who the Frog Queen is and why Diva is still so damn powerful. Chonu Hunters, there was a couple of openings there, but you have to feel so good. Look at the smile. You yeah. have to feel great. Well, when you slow down a team who's just blitzing through the map, you bring them to a screeching hold, and then you just choke them out and win the map. And I think the Dragons have to know their next few games are definitely winnable. Like, this could be the start of a really impressive win streak from the Dragons. Let's head down now to the floor. Danny has an interview for us with Dick. Thank you guys very much. What is up, everybody? I am here with Ding from Shanghai Dragons. Everybody, make some noise. Congratulations. Awesome job today. Now, all right. Now, during halftime, I got to talk to your team, Ding, and they told me that, you know, they, they admitted that Chengdu Hunters were a very unpredictable team, and you guys sort of had a difficulty in map to Paris, but after that, you guys completely dominated them. How did you sort of figure them out after half halftime? 자, 어, 아무래도 좀 청두 팀이 좀 예측하기 힘든 플레이와 좀 그런 조합을 많이 쓰셔서 어, 파리에서는 조금 힘들어 하셨던 것 같은데 그 다음에는 굉장히 수월하게 어, 잘 풀어 나가셨던 것 같아요. 띵 선수 좀 어떻게 좀 해석을 잘 하시게 된것 같나요? 그 청두 팀에 대해서. 어, 파리 솔직히 파리는 어, 뭔가 입구가 좁아서 힘들 건 예측했는데 그 다음은 다른 맵들은 다 넓어가지고 좀. Honestly, uh, because Paris has, has a very narrow entr entrance and narrow pathway, I kind of predicted that we we're going to have a sort of a hard time. But after that, map three and map four, um, all the entrances or all the uh, defining points were very broad and large. So I feel like that was a big factor of us winning. All right. And also, thing, 
things are, I feel like things are looking a lot better for the Shanghai Dragons after today's victory. How are you going to keep this momentum, uh, keep on going, and also sort of make it into the stage two playoffs? 자, 오늘의 좀 승리로 상하이 팀이 좀 굉장히 좀 좋은 자리에 있는 것 같아요. 어떻게 하면 상하이 팀이 좀 계속해서 이 기세를 몰아가서 어, 스테이지 2 플레이오프 때까지 좀 이렇게 잘갈수 있을까요? 어, 한 번만 더 말씀해 주세요. 스테이지 2 플레이오프 때까지 어떻게 좀잘이 기세를 몰아갈 수 있을까요? 기분 안 좋은 것보다 뭔가 웃으면서 게임하면은 계속해서 이길 것 같습니다. Whether we win or lose, I feel like the most crucial part is just having fun and having a positive attitude. And if we have that, I'm sure we could make it all the way to these stage two playoffs. All right, everybody, give it up for Ding one more time. Uber and Mr. X, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Danny, and thank you to Ding. It's nice to be reminded sometimes why we got started with all this in the yeah. first place. It's positive vibes only. Absolutely, I love it. <laughs> Um, great stuff from the Shanghai Dragons. Look, we, we mentioned Gagri looked fantastic. I thought Gamsu dominated the Reinhardt matchup, especially yeah. in that last one. But let's now have a look at who our player of the match brought to you by HB, Bowman by HB is. And this one was for consistency over the entire map. It is definitely going to be Ding. He right. opened up. His Faro was so dominant, especially on that first map, man. Look, they had no answer for his Faro. I know that the hitscan play today for the Chengdu Hunters was not up to the par of you know, taking care of Ding's. Far up playing Junkrat here, like you see on King's Row. I know a big difference maker in that hero, and then also uh, you see the Bastion here in the final map. He had a really sick series all throughout. No doubt about it. And like, I think both of these teams feature Farah players that are very highly regarded, right? Jinmu versus Ding. I think we got to see the better of the two, at least on the day. Ding, especially on King's Row, when those two were actually going head to head, he looked very, very good. Look at this. Only eight deaths uh, across the entire ten. series as Farah. Yeah, 10 barrage kills. So you figure uh, eight, all eight of his deaths came during barrage. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, usually you just end up dying during, well, I mean, during the barrage. It but, is it is sometimes yeah. press Q to respawn after maybe getting one enemy person. Yeah. That, that is kind of the way it works. Hey guys, coming up after this, the games might be over, but Watchpoint is just about to get started. We've got a whole bunch of fun stuff. And looking back over the day, a fond view, the Los Angeles Valley and getting their final star in the stage two. They've got to be happy about that one. Of course, the Yotta Chad himself will be joining the desk on the Watchpoint post. So stick around for that one. For myself and Matt, Mr. X, we'll see you later. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places. Hey man, what's up? You need anything for today? Nah man, I think I'm set. Big day today, man? Yeah, huge. Let's play some Overwatch.